Welcome back to the channel and another broadcast. Today we complete our glorious journey through Ecclesiastes. We're in the 12th and final chapter. Many are the thoughts in a person's heart, but the counsel of the Lord Jehovah, the God of Israel, that doth stand friends. Great shalom, health, prosperity, peace, well-being have those that love the law of the Lord. Nothing causes them to stumble. Uh, to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly. Good food, help others, go on quietly, friends. The wisdom of Yahovah Elohim. Now, I do so trust, friends, that you're studying the scriptures and staying in prayer under the blood of the Spirit, declaring the full name of the Lord Jesus Christ in your homes throughout the day. Um, my suggestion would be would be to spend a number of minutes uh, on several occasions throughout the day in prayer and contemplation uh, and to be studying the scriptures uh, daily to be in the truth so that you don't end up with a bedeviled and deluded mind. Well, this has been most enjoyable, friends. I've been pondering where we'll go on the channel next. Um, but for now, let us read this glorious chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And remember thy creator in the days of thy youth, before the evil days come. And the years draw nigh, of which thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars be darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few. And those that look out of the windows are darkened and the doors are shut towards the street when the sound of the grinding is subdued, and they rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of song are brought low. They are also afraid of what is high, and terrors are in the way, and the almond is despised, and the grasshopper is a burden, and the caper berry is without effect, for man goeth to his age-long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Before the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be shattered at the fountain, or the wheel be broken at the cistern. And the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit return unto God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge, and he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written is upright, words of truth. The words of the wise are as gods, and the collections of them as nails fastened in. They are given from one shepherd. And besides my son, be warned by them of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the end of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil remember thy creator in the days of thy youth before the evil days come and the years draw near of which thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them now that word creator is plural uh, it's a plural word friends In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and earth. It's the plurality of the Godhead. Indeed, most of the times you have the word God in, uh, in the King James, in the Old Testament scriptures, it's the word Elohim. There's three words for God that are all translated as G-O-D in the uh, 
what we call the Old Testament scriptures, friends, El, which is God in the singular, Elohim, which is God in plurality, and Elohar, which is God in the spirit. Of course, we have Lord, L-O-R-D, loving, omnipotent, redeeming deity. So remember thy creator, plural, in the days of thy youth. So bring pleasure and satisfaction to God. Uh, works of righteousness, justice, goodness, and truth to God uh, in the days of your youth, friends. Before the sun and the light and the moon, the stars be darkened, and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men bow themselves, the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out of the windows are darkened. The doors are shut towards the street when the sound of the grinding is subdued and they rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of song are brought low. Before the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, the pitcher be shattered at the fountain, or the wheel be broken at the cistern. These are very interesting terms, friends. The dust returned to the earth as it was, and the spirit returned unto God who gave it. So a spirit in a body is a living soul. And so you have these expressions, the loosing of a silver cord, the breaking of a golden bowl, or a pitcher shattered at the fountain. Um, very interesting, very interesting indeed. So it all has to do with death. It all has to do uh, with uh, the cessation of what we know as life, uh, which is quite simply when the spirit of a human being lives, uh, leaves their physical body, um, and uh, and the body as we know it dies and is buried. So, very interesting to contemplate. <clears throat> Why would it be that the golden bowl is broke or the silver cord is loosed? Well, I think, friends, you've got to look at origins, you know. So, the origin of the curse, uh, when Elohim Yahavah, when God decided uh, that that first uh, man and woman could not have immortality anymore, then the qualitative substantive expression of Jehovah Elohim in creation uh, was reduced. Uh, that first man and woman, they lost their perfection, they lost their immortality. And when they became deluded and bedeviled, and they took the knowledge of evil, um, the qualitative substantive uh, nature and character and expression of Jehovah Elohim uh, was no longer upon the earth in time expressed through humanity until the Lord Jesus Christ came. So, this loosing of a silver cord, the breaking of the golden bowl for me and the picture shattered at the fountain would be the cessation of immortality from mankind. Uh, and, and in this chapter, the language speaks of uh, the death of any human in time uh, as being uh, correlatable, relatable to that exact circumstance thousands of years ago. Death, the terror of kings and the king of terrors. This wheel being broken at the cistern, 
and the picture shattered at the fountain, the two latter analogies uh, in uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 6, 6 being the number of man, so probably quite an important verse for it. I would say the wheel broken at the cistern, wheels in scripture usually speak of sovereignty. You have at the beginning of Ezekiel the wheel upon the earth, which is the entire sovereignty of Jehovah Elohim, the God of Israel, over all flesh. So I think that the wheel broken at the cistern, a cistern, of course, is a container. Um, in the modern era, most uh, households in, in the civilised world uh, will have two systems in their homes, uh, occasionally three, but, but usually uh, usually two. They will have a, a cold water system that retains um, some cold water, uh, and uh, that water would feed the central heating system. Um, and would become hot, of course, when you turn the radiators on. And then you would have a system behind the lavatory. Um, but that was not the case thousands of years ago. If you, well, if you, I suppose anyone that would have any form of system would be reasonably well off classically. But what's in view here, um, when in terms of a system, is, is actually uh, a, a container for, for uh, holding drinking water. And so for a wheel to be broken at the cistern, that means that the cistern wouldn't be used anymore. And so all these expressions, the wheel broken at the cistern, the pitcher, which is a container, shattered at the fountain, the golden ball broken, the silver cord loosed, it all has to do with death and the cessation of immortality uh, for mankind. And everything has to do with the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's quite a solemn chapter. Um, and the first half has to do with what could be described as uh, the natural comprehension of the mind of man in terms of purpose, connection, expression, what to do upon the earth, old age, futility. Uh, death and of course the call is to remember that your creator serve Elohim Yahavah with gladness and rejoicing they are also afraid of what is high terrors are in the way the almond is despised and the grasshopper is a burden the caper varies without effect. So this has to do with the devil upon the earth, grieving uh, mankind, and grieving God. That's really what's in view there. So the curse of sin, death and hell came as a result of the devil deceiving the first woman. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Of course, this is something of a theme. And I suppose every human has that experience of contemplating, oh, what should I do, what should I do, what's the point? You know, emptiness, futility, hopelessness. And that's why you must stay in the scriptures, friends, under the blood in the spirit. The blood of Jesus cleanses you, reconciles you, heals you, pardons you. Um, and so rejoice in truth, rejoice in righteousness, rejoice in what is good. Pray for others, friends, intercede for others. Moreover, because the preacher was wise, it was this is Solomon, he still taught the people knowledge and he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs, no doubt referring to the 31 chapters of Proverbs that we have in the scripture. And of course, we have an entire playlist on this channel on each of those chapters. So although the preacher had a sense of futility and emptiness and despair, 
Um, he still told the people knowledge. He still esteemed knowledge and wisdom. And he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written is upright, words of truth. The lips of the righteous always know what's acceptable. The tongue of the righteous is as pure gold. Set a guard at the door of my lips. We ought not to bless God and curse men who are made in God's image. The fountain ought not to bring forth pure and defiled water. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written is upright, words of truth. So you get the impression that Solomon knew that the things he was writing were divinely inspired. He, he wouldn't have just been thinking, well, you know, I'll just write a few things down. Uh, it was divinely inspired and he knew it. And of course, uh, here we are now, some uh, almost 3,000 years later, studying his words. God has ensured, friends, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the best-known name on the planet, uh, that Christianity is the best-known belief system on the planet, that almost everyone's birthday and calendar on the planet, and indeed today's date, every day, is dated from the incarnation and birth of the Lord Jesus the Christ, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach. God has orchestrated these things sovereignly. God has set these things in place upon the earth. He's also preserved the scripture. The scripture is the most published book on the planet. And God has seen to it that we can study freely today words from 3,000 years ago. And Solomon knew that what he was writing was the word of God. I don't think it would be fair to say Solomon was a prophet. He was a king. He was a preacher. A king was always a judge as well. He was a king, a judge, a preacher. He was also in charge of, of the military and things like this. So King Solomon is a great type. Solomon is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ in, in ascension, in exaltation, and in glorification. That's what Solomon is. King David is more of a type of Christ in his earthly uh, reign before the cross in terms of the three-year ministry. Um, he was a man of blood. He couldn't build the house of Jehovah. His son, after the death of King David, his son Solomon uh, built the house of Jehovah, the great temple of Jehovah Elohim, the house of the Lord. The words of the wise are as goads, and the collections of them as nails fastened in. They are given from one shepherd. Quite a revelatory uh, verse, that. And it seems to infer that all scripture comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, Christ and the scripture are one. The words of the wise are as goads. So the scripture, the word of the Lord is forever settled in the heavens, you see, friends. So the scripture is over mankind. The word of the Lord is over all flesh right now. All flesh is ruled by Vedavaha Elohim, the word of God, the Logos of Theos, the Vot von God, the word of God. So the scripture uh, is over all flesh. That's the mystery of things, friends. It tells you here the collections of them are like nails fastened in. So it's a rather gruesome uh, metaphor when you think of the crucifixion of the Son of God. Uh, the nails fastened in. Mysteriously, the words of the wise are what held Christ tight upon the cross. Uh, the will of God, the mind of God, the word of God, the curse. 
the blessings, the great goodnesses of Jehovah, the counsels, the predetermined foreknowledge of the Lord Jehovah Elohim, the God of Israel. It's a very, very interesting verse for me. The words of the wise are as gods. The collections of them as nails fastened in. They are given from one shepherd. Yes, it's a spiked stick for driving cattle. That's what a god is. So you, if you, if you was a cattle herder, you would have some form of stick to to prod the cattle where to go. Uh, and so it's the idea of direction and guidance. The words of the wise are like direction and guidance for mankind. And the collection of these words are like nails fastened in the setting place. It was the authority of the word of God over all creation. And that's what's going on. That's what that means, friends. Ecclesiastes 12. There's quite a, a lot of precious doctrine and revelation here. And uh, the, the second half is more joyous, of course. Um, the preacher was wise. He still taught the people knowledge. And of course, Elohim Yahavar appeared to Solomon and said, what would you like? Solomon says, wisdom. God said, I'll give you wisdom and riches and honor and the kingdom. He still taught the people, even though he had some feelings of despair and futility. He pondered, sought out, set in order many proverbs. He sought out to find acceptable words. And that which is written is upright words of truth. They are as gods. The collection of them as nails. Very interesting. So you have gods and nails given from one shepherd. Besides, my son, be warned of them. Of making many books, there is no end of much study. Is a weariness of the flesh. I have, I myself probably have, well, probably a hundred e-books. Now I don't. I very, very, very frequently look at any of them, friends. I don't. I don't have the time or inclination. However, I have them mainly to distribute to other people through the miracle of WhatsApp. I, well, I'm admin for more than half a dozen app, uh, WhatsApp groups, with each with, you know, many of them with several hundred members. Uh, and so, and they're all spiritual in nature, um, addressing a myriad of topics, you know, probably over a hundred of them. Uh, but I'm conscious that were you to be someone that was endlessly reading such things, then, uh, you know, you can be, they, they can be so specialised and, and specific, you're just simply better off reading the scriptures. There are a lot of good books that, in fact, the majority of those PDFs are, are very helpful indeed, uh, but most of them address specific things, although probably a, a quarter of them are daily devotion, which are exceptionally beneficial. But at any rate, friends, uh, it's quite possible to become distracted. It tells you here that much study is a weariness of the flesh. Read the scriptures, friends. Let us hear the end of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. All that matters is what God says. It doesn't matter what men or devils say. You know. All that all that matters is what God has said, friends. And that's why the scripture, God has spoken Christ. God has spoken his son into time. You see, so everything has to do with the sovereignty of Elohim, Yahweh, God through the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit of God, and all things are entirely subject to us. The only person not subject to Christ Jesus is the one who subjects everything to Christ Jesus, which is God, Jehovah. It's a holy mystery. Now, let's hear the end of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments. This is the whole of man. Fear God, keep his commandments. This is the whole of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That doth remind me of, I believe it's Romans. Let me just find it for you, friends. Romans chapter 2. Yes, Romans 2.16, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men 
according to my gospel by Jesus Christ. There it is. A full revelation of all things, friends. Complete revelation. Complete transparency and accountability. The headship of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sovereignty of the Lord Jesus Christ, the authority of the Son of God. God will bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Yes, wonderful thing to contemplate. Whatever makes manifest is light. Walk in the light as he is in the light, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanseth thee from all sin. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Or I, the light of life. Bring all your works into the light, friends. Come to the light. Bring everything out into the open, friends. Full transparency, full accountability. Fear God, keep his commandments. Remember the creator. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. God will bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, friends, that's the completion of Ecclesiastes. What a precious journey that has been. We will be back soon with a new book and a new podcast. So stay strong in the scriptures under the blood of Jesus Christ, in the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the truth. And the God of peace sanctify you wholly in every good work and word and guide you. Uh, in your journeys, friends, the steps of a good man are ordered by Jehovah. The steps of a good woman, indeed, are ordered by Jehovah. Many are the thoughts in a person's heart, but the counsel of the Lord Jehovah, the God of Israel, that doth stand. Baruch havah Hashem Adonai Yehovah Elohim. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of Adonai Yehovah Elohim. The Rivon HaOlamim, sovereign of the universe. Shalom, shalom, family.